Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, I'm Ronald, and uh, uh, this talk today is uh, based on uh, work in progress. Uh, we have started this project uh, back in January, so we have uh, done some field work already. Uh, we have like uh, five weeks into, uh, into the field work to, to this project. Uh, our project explores the uh, stalled or cancelled uh, land-based uh, agricultural investments. And we're trying to look at how uh, this impacts on uh, access to land and livelihoods among the uh, smallholder farmers and herders in, in Tanzania. And uh, uh, our work is based on two, two main uh, things. One is the slow or partial progress in terms of implementation of these, uh, of these projects in Africa. For example, uh, some literature shows that about only 0.3% of the land that has been allocated for these projects has, is actually uh, being utilized. So about 20, 22 million hectares of land have been allocated to land-based investments, especially agricultural investments in Africa, but only 0.3% of that is, uh, is being utilized. And also, uh, much of the research focus at the moment is mainly on the project uh, start. Most, most research is focusing when projects are starting. And much is really done in regards to what happens when these projects are actually uh, in progression. And most importantly, what happens when these projects are actually uh, stalled or they fail. So that's what we are, we are trying to, uh, to address uh, in, this, in this particular project. So our objectives are twofold. One is to, to assess uh, uh, the effects of uh, closed or stalled land deals and, and, and how that affects access. Uh, how smallholders and headers are represented, recognized in these processes but uh, also to look into how uh, such processes actually affect uh, smallholders, uh, farmers and herders in terms of uh, livelihoods. So it's uh, our work, our project is a multiple uh, case studies approach. We are currently uh, f following upon four projects, the one, the four on top. Uh, three, of our, three of those are actually being followed by myself and my colleague, who is based at the University of, Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences, whom we are collaborating with. And uh, the fourth one, uh, Sun Biofuels, is actually being followed uh, by one of our master's students who is attached to the project. We are also thinking of uh, following upon other uh, projects, so this is still tentative. Uh, three of them. One is uh, run by a state uh, parastoto, uh, a, sugar, a, a very ambitious sugar, a sugar project. And the other ones are uh, on jatropha and, and, and rice. So this is, this is a map of Tanzania for those, who are, for those of you who are not aware. It's just to give you a, a spatial sense of, of it. So the two projects are uh, on the western part of the country in the region called Kigoma, actually it borders uh, Burundi and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, and the two projects were actually aimed for oil palm in Kigoma. Kigoma is, is suitable for oil palm. Uh, but both of them have actually, uh, uh, they stalled and then they have eventually failed. And the other projects that we are, uh, investments that we are following is uh, Eco Energy, uh, in Bagamoyo Sugar Limited, as well as Sun Biofuel, it, it's not clearly seen. So the two under the red uh, uh, symbols are the ones that we are following up on. The one under green is actually operational. I'll, I'll, I'll talk a bit more about it uh, in a moment. And the remainder uh, uh, south, further south are uh, the ones that we are, we are, we are planning to, to follow up on probably later during the, the, the project. So what, what we are basically looking at are projects that are not being implemented. So the land has been allocated for the projects, but nothing really happened. So 
the land is technically lying in limbo. Uh, it's not really very clear what is actually going to happen. Uh, there, there are no investors. There are, there are people living in the land, but they're not actually certain as regards to what is going to happen tomorrow, or the next month, or the next year. So what we are, to, what we are already trying to look into, look into is what is actually, what actually entails this land in limbo? What is happening there? And in doing so, we, we are following upon what is happening in the, uh, in the areas that were allocated for these projects. Uh, and in case of uh, Bagamoyo, which is on the eastern part of the country, along the, the coast, uh, we are following upon two projects, which is uh, the Bagamoyo Eco Energy, the failed one, uh, this is a project that was actually initiated in 2006 uh, when the MOU was signed. And initially it was a, it was a bioethanol uh, project. So the, the plan was to plant sugarcane to, to produce ethanol. And it was actually a Swedish uh, uh, initiative. It was a project from, from Sweden. And uh, so the initial support for the project was actually coming from the Swedish International Development Agency, SIDA. And at the time, they had promised to, to fund uh, the initiative with a tune of 16 million USD. But actually, until the project uh, 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 stalled, they had already dispersed about 5 million US dollars. So since then, actually, things started going uh, astray. And uh, funding was not actually coming by. And the investments, actually, the project had already made some evaluation and assessment to compensate the people who were on the land uh, with plans to, to, to evict them. But because there was no money to compensate them, actually the people were, were, were still there. And they are still there as we are, as we are speaking. Uh, some of them are actually still waiting for the compensation to be paid so that they can, they can vacate the area. So fast forward, uh, 2016, uh, the, the six. The, sixth, the, the fifth government comes into power under the leadership of uh, the late Magufuli, uh, President Magufuli, uh, and who had uh, some ambitious po political projects, uh, including the industrialization, which is state-led. So he was really pushing for uh, state-led uh, parastotos also get into, into, into active uh, sectors of, of, of economy or production. And uh, alongside that, it was actually to attract more investors who were interested to put up factories and industries. And one of the initiatives was actually to reallocate land what was being used. That was not being used. But land that has pre had previously been allocated for investment but was laying idle and was not being used. So uh, the Bagamoyo Eco Energy uh, fell victim to, to, to that initiative. So the land was actually uh, taken back by, by, by orders by the president. Uh, this, is, this is one of the few pieces of land that was taken back by the state in Tanzania. So in essence, actually, uh, Bagamoyo Eco Energy lost the rights to the, to the title of that land. And uh, after that, a uh, lawsuit ensued. And actually, they, uh, they sued the government uh, at, at the Washington uh, uh, court, International Court for Settlement of uh, Investment Disputes. And so the, the, the case has been uh, running. And uh, just last year, I think it was November or December, actually, the, the case was concluded. And uh, the investor, the former investor, was actually w w won the case. So the government of Tanzania was supposed to, to pay to compensate the investor for, for the losses that have been incurred. And the losses that were missed, should, that, should they have proceeded with the, with the investment. So what is going on at the moment is uh, the payment. So payment is ongoing. We are not sure how much has been paid yet or how much was supposed to be paid to the investor. Probably we'll be able to find out uh, uh, later as we, as we continue. So that was part one of the Bagamoyo saga. The second part is... Uh, with regards to Bagamoyo Sugar Limited. Now this is what happened after the land was uh, reclaimed by the government. So half of it, 10,000 hectares, were actually allocated to a local business, uh, a local business person, uh, 
slash investor called Baresa. Uh, he's a Tanzanian of, Tanzanian of Russian origin, but born and raised in Tanzania. Uh, and uh, just to give you a bit of a background, in, in 2016, just a few months after Magufuli had uh, gotten into power, there was, a, there was a big crisis, sugar crisis in the country, in which, is, which brought up a, a lot of uh, hot discussion in, in, in the public as regards to what the government is actually trying to do to address the sugar scarcity, because it was a recurring uh, problem. So out of that, actually, uh, the push was for the government to come up with drastic measures to address once and for all the problem of sugar scarcity in the country. And this is how uh, Bagamoyo sugar came into being. Actually, uh, in a public, in a, in a public uh, political rally, the president actually offered to give land to any investors who was willing and ready to, to invest and, pro and, and produce sugar. So, and Bagresa was, was one of the guys who were, were ready to do that. So that's how they ended up getting the land that was previously uh, under the eco energy uh, uh, investments. So half of that land was, was given to Baresa, and uh, the factory is already operational. They have already, the sugar is already on the shelves in the supermarkets, and I think uh, later this year, in July, they are going to start with the second harvest. And, uh, and the production is actually done within just uh, 1,600 hectares of the land that has been allocated. So about 8,000 8, 8, or so uh, of land is still uh, unutilized, probably a potential for further expansion in the future. Uh, the factory employs about uh, 1,200 workers. Six of them are actually seasonal and mostly uh, harvesters who come on seasonal basis to harvest and then go back. And these are most, on average, they are paid uh, 6,500 six, uh, Tanzan, 6, Tanzanian shillings, which is roughly $2 a day. Anyway, so what we are left with is the 10,000 hectares from the 20 that were previously under the Bagamoyo Eco Energy. So this is the land that is actually in limbo at the moment. And uh, they are few people were living in that land. Some of them were the ones who uh, were relocated from the 10,000 hectares that were given to the, the sugar factory, which is running now. And some of them were the ones who were living in, on the land, even from the times of the eco-energy investment. But on top of that, we are already seeing an influx of people coming to acquire land in, that, in those uh, 10 hectares. And the drive is mainly because land is cheap there, because this is general land. And the people who are living there, they know it's general land, and they can sell it cheaply. So when we are doing field work, actually, the, the, the language that is being used is not to buy or sell. It's just to, to compensate people for, for what they have done on the land, to keep it clear, from, to keep the bush from growing. So, what we are already seeing is that uh, the people who come to buy land or acquire land there are uh, of, of two, uh, two types. One are land speculators because Bagamoyo is located about 55, 65 kilometers from Dar es Salaam. So the, this is where the city is expanding to. So there's a lot of land speculation in that part of the, of the, of the country. But two, so these are the ones who are aware that the land is, is general land, but they are just speculating. Probably they might be compensated should another investor come. So it's a, it's a gamble. But the second group are people who are not really aware of what is going on. They, they, they think this, this is village land, and they can acquire uh, land at a, at a, very, at a, at a very cheap uh, price. We also have a group of people who were living there previously, but they have uh, they have left the, the area while keeping their, their plots. And uh, most of these are the ones who are actually uh, expecting to be compensated by the previous investor, the, the Bagamoyo uh, Eco Energy. So that was the, the first part, which is on the Bagamoyo, the eastern part of the, of the country. Now let's go back to, to the western part, near the border with Burundi and uh, Congo, DR. There we have two investors whom we are following. 
upon. One is uh, Felisa Limited. This is a company that was planning to, as I said, to, to invest in oil palm. So they were given uh, land in one of the districts in Kigoma called Uvinza uh, to the tune of uh, 4,000 hectares. And it was a joint venture between a Tanzanian uh, investor and uh, Belgian. And uh, they had acquired loan from one of the state parastotals called National Social Security Fund. So it had agreed to fund them in, the, in their initiative. So they also gave them the first installment, which they used to, to clear the land and actually establish uh, a nursery, uh, oil palm nursery. But uh, unfortunately, the second installment was not disbursed because of some of the things that I'm going to talk about. In 2016, uh, when Magufuli came into power, uh, that was about the time that uh, the investment, Felisa, was actually processing or negotiating with the NSSF for the second installment. But the coming into power by Magufuli actually changed everything because the, the, the ambitious industrialization drive uh, actually changed all the the focus by state parastotals. And the NSSS, for example, they got into, into, into industrialization themselves. Actually, the Mkulazi that I mentioned was, was their initiative. So they abandoned other initiatives that were, they, 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 they were into. And this actually affected Felisa in terms of accessing the second installment. So the project actually it was told and, and, and failed. This, the other investment is called Agrisol, but these, they were given land, but they never showed up. So there's not, <laughs> not much talk about them. So what are the, uh, the, the potential analytical strands? Uh, one is the law of state in, in installing or uh, closure of investments, uh, conflicts between the state and investors. We also see the role of sugar importers or sugar barons uh, who are, uh, are in ties with some elites within the ruling party, CCM. Uh, there's a, Investors, sugar, sugar importers actually get a lot of profits from these deals because they are exempt, exempt, exempted from tax. So it, it, it's a lot more profitable uh, for sugar barons to invest sugar rather than invest in factories for sugar manufacturing. So this has kind of uh, affected sugar-based investments in the country. We yeah, land claims be, between government agencies. For example, where Eco Energy was is actually, the land is bordered by a national park. So the National Park is actually claiming part of the land to that. So these are some of the things that affect investors. Uh, I've already talked about uh, Magufuli. Um, yeah, this is, yeah, I've already said about this. So quickly to, to, to wind up, what does, does, this, does the limbo do? One is changes in access to land and land use. The land has become cheaper. Uh, the, the land in Libya is becoming cheaper to some people, so they can easily get it and use it, though with a lot of uncertainty. Uh, there's no developments, uh, because people have been cautioned by the government not to make any permanent developments on the land in terms of uh, facilities or permanent crops. There's no service provisioning in terms of public services like water, health, schools, and things like that. And uh, the land is not actually well utilized in economic sense. Yeah, we're also seeing a lot of uh, issues in terms to, in, in relation to land scarcity in the villages that are bordering the areas because some of the, some of the land that was given to the investors were, were actually chopped out of the village land. So land is becoming scarcer. The population is, is, is booming. We are seeing a lot of in-migration. Uh, people are trying to go into these areas because they're in limbo, uh, easy to access. Uh, exa for, for instance, uh, the, Su the Sukuma Agropastor is coming from the Lake Victoria Basin, the Lake Victoria region in the northern part, northwestern part of the country. Uh, there also likelihood, there's also a likelihood of uh, an increase in conflicts, uh, in conflicts at different scales between local communities, farmers and herders, between local communities and the government, which is actually 
controlling the land and between the government and investors, between local communities and investors. So finally, what does the, look, the future look like? Three main things that we are, we, are, we are thinking that are likely to happen. One is the increasing uncertainty in terms of land tenure. Uh, and now with the new government, which is pro-investment, we are likely to see the, the, the images of, of, of this, this cycle again. We are likely to see a lot of investors coming, getting land, and probably some of them not being able to do anything with, with, with that. So with a lot of implications like food security, poverty levels, urban migration due to landlessness. And lastly, uh, more conflicts are likely to, to arise from that. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much.